Yeah, welcome back. It's still Plus Politics, and uh, we did promise you that when we return, we're going to be talking something else. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has warned politicians and their supporters against bullying and hate speeches during electioneering campaigns. Dr. Harley Longpet, Kogi resident electoral commissioner, gave the warning during the commission's engagement with representatives of political parties, traditional rulers and religious and community leaders in Lokoja, Kogi state. Longpet said that the warning became necessary because due to recent uh, cases of abuse and derogatory statements issued or used by party candidates against one another. And joining us live to discuss this is Alester Wilcox, a public affairs analyst, and we're hoping to be joined by Adewale Ademola, who is also a public affairs analyst. In the meantime, Alexa is standing by. Alexa, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. It's my utmost pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, we're talking about um, bullying in the political space. Let's try to get a context here. What would you describe as bullying when it comes to politics and politicking? Well, um, the word bullying, uh, I, I wouldn't want to know how in what context I'm going to speak in political campaign. I think bullying, bullying mainly has to do with when um, um, a, a, I mean, a junior person is having a, taking advantage over uh, uh, somebody else that is more senior to the person. So that's where bully comes in. But uh, when, we have to, when we are dealing with polit political campaign, I think every of them is on equal, equal footing because nobody is master nor servant in that kind of relationship. So the word bullying, I, I don't know where that will come from. But if we look at hate speech, yes, hate speech can be situated in the context of our political, of our politicking. Because uh, doing politicking, politicians seem to employ all kinds of tactics, um, sometimes to instigate and to incite. Hate speech has to do when you use speeches, when you use words that are inciting to the other person that will incite the public or an institution against the other person. So I think that's an issue consider itself more in that space. But as for bullying, in politics, if you are not strong, then you don't go to the ring. Because all kinds of things will be thrown at you and all you need to do is to also throw back and see where I mean 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 how it goes. So I think it's right to caution political parties. Of course, the continuous question of political parties will in order to create uh, stability within this within the policy. So it's part of their responsibility to moderate uh, political parties how they go about their campaign. So, they, so they are they are perfectly in order. Yeah, but um, when they were trying to define what bullying is, uh, what you defined or what you also mentioned as hate speech was a part of it. Uh, and they used specifically that you're using derogatory words against your opponent or th words that will bring down the image of that person just because you want to climb to the top. So th their definition is quite broad. But it's almost like it's a norm in Nigeria that when they are politicking, when they are campaigning, they use this kind of words. A lot of times they don't even speak to the issues that need to be spoken to. And you have said that when you want to join politics and you want to contest, you should expect those kind of things should be continued like this because we need to hear what plans they have, not how to bring down the next person. No, no it's... Um we cannot say because we are Africans and we respect uh, elders or we respect people or we want to cover up, so to say, and then we do not present the candidates the way they are. Part of politicking is to bring out the character of the other kind of, of your opponents and bring out its antecedents. It's everywhere. Uh, it's everywhere. I don't think our politics is that bad as like that, that of the Americans, where we copy from. Uh, or that of the Britain, where we copy from. It's a issue whereby you are, what you did in secondary school will be brought to the table against you. And that has cost a lot of candidates their positions or even their nomination. So I don't see anything wrong in presenting or extreme candidates. That is part of the politics. It's nothing out, out of the ordinary. You must bring out the, the character of the candidate. It's, it's allowed. But if you don't you don't bring out falsehood. What you do not need us to do is falsehood, deliberate falsehood on a thing that you know it is not true and you are presenting it as to be true. And then secondly, 
you are instigating either a tribal section or ethnic section or um, religious sentiment, bringing it up against a candidate, against uh, a, a party, that for me is a no-no. But if he's talking about people's antecedents, people's uh, a, a, a past record, track record, people's record, people's actions and inactions in the past, of course, these are part of politics. They must be brought to the fore because for a Niger for Nigerians, for people to make up their mind as to who to vote, you must show that person both his character, both his past, his antecedents, and what is it today. So I don't see anything wrong in that. We must bring out the candidates and we must instruct them. That is obviously part of the politicking. But you don't bring falsehood. You don't. You don't. You don't. You, you don't create lies against the candidate. The candidate. You do not say things that you know in your mind, you know this is are, are not true. You don't color the things. If it is clearly what a candidate is, put it out there for Nigerians to know that candidate. So that people will make their will, uh, that people will make up their mind as to who they want to vote for. So not falsehood or hate speech. I mean I don't see you presenting candidates' character or candidates' antecedents as bullying. It's not bullying, it's not hate speech. You are only presenting them, and it happens everywhere in the world. People must attack the character of the other person. Because the character of that person is what brings him to office. His antecedent is what brings him Somebody who has nothing to offer, who has had nothing to offer, whose background, I mean, whose, whose past work cannot, I, I mean, I mean, has nothing to, to I mean, I mean, I mean that, let me use the popular language, to, 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 to verify about. And then you are not saying, even when people bring that kind of thing out, it's, it is a hate speech. No, it's the, who the person is. But don't bring falsehood. Hmm. Okay, long but, say but, a man, long as say a man is promoting is promoting tribal violence or a promoting ethnic agenda or is promoting religious agenda, those things those are those are those are obvious lies, and so that's what constitutes hate speech. Hmm. And so those are the things that must be guided. But talk about the candidates the kind of, and their character and their antecedents. I think that is to be allowed, that should be encouraged, so Nigerians will know the truth of the persons that they have, that they want to put their, give their mandate to, so that they can verify their actions and inactions in line with what they are saying at present. Uh, but sometimes these things, uh, the real issues get lost in this trying to expose the other person. It's like you're asking out a woman and then you're trying to run down the present boyfriend just to get what you're supposed to get and not promising anything. So we tend to lose what these people who are coming, who are saying that they are going to govern us, are going to do. They don't say it, and they just tell us about the next person and leave what their programs are. Are we not losing enough information that we should have used for or against these people in just the course of trying to expose the next person? No, no, you're not losing. Every party has its manifesto. Every political party has its manifesto. And politicians go about selling their manifesto. That's why they have town hall meetings. They don't go to town hall meetings and start criticizing their, their, their opponents. They have town hall meetings. They have uh, campaign rallies. They have other engagements with stakeholders. That is where they sell their manifesto. So they have ample platform to sell their manifesto. But if in the course of selling your manifesto or in the course of, uh, or in the course of answering questions, you take a jab as your opponent, which is allowed, which is normal. It doesn't preclude the fact that you're not selling your, your manifesto. I'm sure that all the political parties, they have their manifesto, they have it in written form, they have it in booklet form, and they, and, and they, they have distributed it, I'm sure they've given it far and wide, all the people that they could distribute to. I'm sure they also have uh, uh, the campaign rallies, where they go, and also revert those manifestos. They also have uh, uh, public uh, spaces. For instance, the APC president candidate was at Chatham House, where he delivered his manifesto, where he answered question business. But what do most Nigerians do? You see, that's even why, why you see, sometimes we, the Nigerians are the most funny people. Rather than listening to the, what the manifesto, the APC candidate went to present at Chatham House, they are looking for the faults or the things he didn't do right, or why he has to uh, pass questions to his uh, team to answer. Meanwhile, you, so who is, so, so and, and, I mean, as far as that place is concerned, he didn't talk about his opponents. He talked about his job and his manifesto, and it was widely publicized. And but rather than, if you ask most Nigerians are talking about uh, why did he pass question to A to B, ask them what the man said. 
they will all be lost. They don't know what the man said. All they are after is to find critical faults in what he did and what he did not do. So even we Nigerians, we are so very, very complex. Even where the, where the candidates are presenting their, their programs, we are not looking at the programs. We are looking at how to uh, ridicule the candidates. But they are, they, are, they are selling their programs. So let us pay more attention to listen to their programs and pay less attention to the jobs. You must throw the jobs. It's not strange. You must throw the jobs. Today, uh, Donald Trump tax records is source of scrutiny. Right from when he was running for office, when he left office, even though he won't run again. His character, his businesses are up for scrutiny. So nobody should be against. I mean, Joe Biden's son is Joe Biden's son is. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, he's being investigated, which investigation will also touch the father. So these are part and parcel of politicking. If you know you cannot stand the heat, then don't enter the kitchen, because that is where that, that's a place that is hot, and you are you will be extreme. It's not it, it, it's not a it, it's not a religious setting where you say the touch not my anointed or do my prayer no harm. Neither is it a traditional setting where you say the king does not do wrong. So this is this is a political setting, quite different from the the, the religious environment, different from the uh, uh, from the um, traditional environment. But where you are campaigning for vote, so your character, your conduct, your antecedents must all become must all come to the fore for Nigerians to make adequate uh, choices. And who is best to expose this in other than, other than your opponents? Your opponents should have things about you that they were exposed. But listen, but what I'm saying is, the position is that you don't say lies, you don't spread falsehood, you don't spread things that are not real. You must look for your facts. You must get your facts clear, and you must present those that are factual, not hate speech, not things that will that is inciting candidates against the, either the constituency or against their, uh, their I mean, their people or the of the of, of the country. No, those just are hate speech. But in terms of throwing the jabs, you must throw the jabs, and the jabs must be thrown. That is what politics is all about. Okay, uh, well, um, you mentioned Chatham House. There's so much to talk about, but that will be digressing, so let's talk for another day. But in the meantime, uh, I was laughing inside when uh, you were talking about uh, the manifesto, because was it the uh, former president, Lucio Gombasanjo, who said that if you want to hide something from a Nigerian, put it in a book, because Nigerians don't like to read. Okay, but if you give them the opportunity to, to hear you talk, uh, it does a whole lot of good uh, to them and all that. They, they, they can make their choices and all that. But now the question is, if these are very, very uh, normal things in the political setting, when every time they gather after, after four years in what I would like to call a political Olympic, to do what they do, bring down the opponents so that their own star will shine, what then is the need for INEC to even issue this warning? How is it going to impact on the next election? How is it going to make a difference by just issuing this warning? Well, there's always a borderline, and, and I've just said that there's always a borderline. And that borderline is when you begin to incite and throw things that are not true. That's the borderline. And so there are, these are the red lines that you must not cross. This, this must be done within the confines of factual issues, truths, things that are verifiable, things that are real, things that are true about the candidate. So the most that those are those are, those, those are within the confines of any political, but not to go overboard or to go uh, beyond the borderline. So that's why I need to once in a while check up what is happening, you know, because because if you allow men like some of the people that I see speak, of course. Sometimes they go overboard. I mean, they go overboard. I mean, on, on I mean, on all spectrum, mm -hmm. you know, they go overboard. So you you must always be guided by the code. There must be there are codes of operation, and nobody says you should, no, the no code says you should not expose the the dirty, the deaths of your opponents. Those are part of politicking. Which must be who is best to expose the character or the inaction of the opponent, other than the other other than the the contestants themselves, you know, that's why in a race, everybody runs to win. So those are the things, but you don't run in another man's track. That's the, okay. That would be a foul against you. Yeah, so, so, sometimes. Um, talking about, so, 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 I'm sorry, so talking about um, Nigeria is not with really, it. Yes, that is clear, but who do you blame? You know, if manifestos are being shared to everybody, stating their plans, and you don't want to read it, all you're after is to look at the man's age or the man's... Uh, what he speak, what he didn't speak, how he pronounces his word, 
have not, then you are the one. That is the problem, not the candidate. And again, the candidates also, apart from the manifesto, they are, like I said, they are in town hall meetings. They have held press conferences. They have held town hall meetings. They have held rallies. They have held rallies. And you see, let me also this this. Most of the jabs do, are not, do not come from the candidates themselves. Most of the jabs come from their, 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 I mean, I mean, their media men or their campaign uh, team, not from the candidates themselves. The candidates are busy selling Nigerians, selling, selling their candidates, uh, their, their program to the Nigerians. Well, of course, their media men or their campaign uh, council members are the ones that uh, take on the opponents vis-a-vis -vis whatever they can, because the candidates don't have the time. But uh, once in a while, in their campaign rallies, or in answering questions, they must throw jabs at the opponent. But the main, ja the main, the main dirty job is done by the handlers. And we have seen it very much in this campaign. So that is just, as far as I'm concerned, um, there must be a borderline which you don't cross, and which, of course, when you want to cross it, the, the, the authorities must, must call it order. And INEC is doing that in order to see that there's still sanity within the, within, the, within, within the polity. Okay, just a quick one there, just a follow up there. When you mentioned INEC, uh, some people have exp expressed worry that INEC may not be equipped enough to carry out all the things that we expect them to carry out. And they are also saying they will carry out vote buying, they will prosecute the people, uh, people who do hate speech, they will prosecute them, and so many things that they have mentioned. And some people are proposing that a body should be set up that can handle electoral problems that INEC should focus on organizing and executing elections. Do you buy that proposal or you have a different uh, idea about it? Can, hand, uh, can INEC well, handle everything that they are proposing? Well, in time past, uh, it has always been said that INEC is overburdened with all the processes that have to do with election, from vote registration to registration of political parties to um, conduct of election, and then defending of electoral results in court. And now, uh, talking about prosecution of uh, misdemeanors within the electoral uh, processes. I think that would be too much, really. If you ask me, that would be quite, quite too much on one particular body. I do not prosecute, the police do. I do not even have the power to arrest, the police do. So it is not the duty of INEC to uh, prosecute vote buyers. It is duty of the police, because INEC do not have its own security force. They do not have their own prosecuting uh, officers. What INEC is a civil organization. So if there is so, um, so, so those other uh, uh, persons, those in security outfit, those in other areas, are, uh, 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 I mean, uh, stakeholders within the electoral processes. So they should be more involved. But that's not to say that INEC cannot be, they cannot be unbundled. Maybe things about political party registration and maintenance should go to a different body. Things about uh, voters registration should go to a different body. And then I let concentrate on, and, and then things about security of after um, uh, of all those other aspects should also be more strengthened maybe within the police or the security agencies, so that I know concentrate. But really, if you look at all the all that the law gives by neck, it is being overburdened, and most of them they cannot do it. I know cannot prosecute, I know cannot arrest. I said they use the security agencies to do that. So it's it's, it's like giving a man a responsibility. That he needs the he needs the he needs another person to solve for him. So I mean, it's it's it's, it's a malady. I I, I I I put it that way. But that's not to say that the INEC has not been performing all this while coming at elections. No matter how imperfect, they keep improving on the electoral process every year, every time there's an election. So let's keep encouraging them. This is just 24 years of democracy. I'm sure by time, we, but I mean others took them long time to even get it get, get it right. So we are 24. We are still, I'm sure, we are not doing badly at all with respect to this electoral process. We are not doing badly, although we can, we can do better. We can really do better. But let's also, let's also have the faith in the system. We are not doing badly and, and keep a good neck. I think there's a need to onboard that neck to, mm. or to, to, I mean, to smaller units so that there will be more efficiency within the system. Uh, just finally, now uh, 2023 is uh, around the corner. Um, the election is like uh, 75 days away or so, and 
a lot of people have expressed confidence that this is going to be like uh, a decider for Nigeria. It's going to be something a little bit different from what we've been experiencing, except for June 12, that was like the free, freest and fairest election that the history uh, we have ever recorded in the history of Nigeria, the option A4. But people have so much faith in the next election. If you also have this much faith, what are the things that are giving you so much faith in the 2023 election that is going to be uh, a really good one, or at least better than what faith. we've had in some years now. I've had faith in all of my life. That's why every year I see me, I go out and vote. Uh, and my vote count, even if my candidates that I vote for do not win all the elections. So I have explicit confidence in the process. I have faith in the election, just as I've had. The only difference in this election is that there's a heightened expectation because, um, unlike before, when there are two dominant parties, now we have a third force that is also showing showing some strength within what within certain constituency. So it's going to be an very interesting one because uh, people now have more than one option. And that's also the fourth candidate. Uh, a lot of people don't talk about Kokwaso. People consider on talking about OB, um, Tini, uh, BAT and the Atiku. Uh, people don't talk about Kokwaso. Of course, Kokwaso is also a force that could uh, cost a lot of votes off that of some of that candidates. While P2B is also going to chop up a, a lot of votes from, from a particular candidate, uh, Council will also do the same. But the truth of the matter is Nigerians are expectants. The mobilization is very high. People want to go out and... That's why I see that those who registered during the registration processes are very much, and they that shut up the electoral register. And now people are calling that PVC. People are interested in the election. The, the expectations are very high. The interest is high. That is the only difference. The interest is high, and people talk about it everywhere. There's, uh, apart from the two dominant parties, there's a third candidate that's also pulling weight, and people are talking about it. So it's good, and that's why the campaign processes, you expect it to be more, uh, uh, more of a rancorous one, because you must, you, you, before you be doing one candidate, now you are talking about two, can, two, two formidable opponents. So you must be able to do things to discredit them and make sure their own program very well. So let's, let's be hopeful. Let's be very expectant. Let's hope that INEC will, will live up to its expectation. And let's hope that the season we behave themselves. It is, it is INEC can do their own bit, but it is we that must behave ourselves on the day of election and after the election and accept the result as it, as, as it comes in. Not because you're a candidate that you've been hyping and expect to win, you know win. They want to bring down heaven, so you want to think that the election was rigged. Now, your own best is to campaign for your candidate, be able to sell a candidate and sell him very well, not insulting people not being rude, not being forceful, not violent, but sell your candidate and sell him with all the, all these past accidents and credentials and all what you think and sell him with. And that is the only way that we can go for us to have a perfect election that will be peaceful before, during, and most importantly, after the election. election. Okay, thank you very much, Alester, for being a part of our program today. It's wonderful having you. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm always available. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've been talking with uh, Mr. Lester Wilcox. Uh, it's unfortunate we couldn't be joined by Adewale Ademola. Uh, he will be with us another day. And we were talking about uh, the warning that Aina gave to uh, the political parties and their contestants, people who are standing uh, to uh, gain political positions in 2023, should be mindful of what they say. Uh, during this campaigning. Don't bring down the other person. And like Alex, Alexa said, if you're bringing down the next person, let everything you say be true. But we're expecting that 2023 will be a decider for Nigeria. And let's hope that you too will play your part. If you're up to 18, go out and vote. Get your PVCs now. PVCs are very close to you these days until the 15th of January. After that, you might not have the uh, opportunity to go very close by to get your PVCs until you go to the local government headquarters. So do yourself this favor. Let's make Nigeria the Eldorado we've always dreamed of. Until we meet again tomorrow, same time, my name is Nyamgul Agaji, signing out.